all had a dream. A dream to fly. To have a career in the sky. Perhaps most of us didn't realize that our dream to fly for a living would involve being a mathematician? Okay, 6,624.7 total minus 1,164.8 night equals uh, 7 minus 8, borrow the 1. Or being a lawyer. Okay, okay, rest period means a continuous period determined prospectively during which the flight crew member is free from all restraint by the certificate holder, including freedom from present responsibility. What the f- Keep the dream alive. Automate all that other stuff with Log10 Pro, the professional pilot's choice. Hello, everyone. I'm really glad that you could join us today for our customizing Log10 Pro live stream. I've got Thomas and David here with me, the gurus who will take you through it all. Um, I won't take too long here. I'm the director of marketing for Cordine. I've been with the company for, I don't know, 13 or odd years or something like that. And uh, uh, I'm really excited to have you all here. Please um, let us know where you're com coming in from. Just post in the, in the uh, chat there. And if you have any questions uh, during the webinar, also post them in the chat and uh, we'll get to them, we'll, our team will get to them for sure. So uh, just uh, throw that in there, just to let you know, we're also gonna be recording this uh, live stream. So um, you can have a look at it afterwards. Uh, uh, and uh, we're just excited to have you here. So I'll let uh, Thomas and David introduce himself. Uh, start, with, start with David. Hello everyone, good morning, afternoon or evening. Well, depending on where you are, it's so good to have you all here. Um, I think I actually, can see a few names that I recognize. So welcome back, those of you that are returning. If it's your first time, well, I hope that you enjoy it, and certainly that's not your last time today. Um, as Paul said, I'm David. I've been with Cordine for a little, little over a year and a half now. I've been doing mostly support, so I might have actually talked to some of you um, already before. I'm also a Dash A pilot, um, so if there's any other Dash A pilots that have tuned in today, Feel free to let us know in the comment. Either way, I hope that you really enjoy this and uh, that you can make the most of it. Hey everyone, I'm Thomas. I'm the manager of customer support here at Coradine. Uh, I came to Coradine from a more of an airline operations background, dispatch and uh, flight routing and that kind of stuff. Uh, but I've been with Coradine for five years and um, Happy to have you all here talking about customizing Log10 Pro for the professional pilots. So let's dive right into it. So the first thing I uh, wanna talk about when you're talking about customizing Log10 Pro is typical roles. Um, typical role is the first thing you're gonna be asked if you just downloaded Log10 Pro, you're gonna be asked to select your typical role. But if, even if you've been using Log10 Pro for uh, quite some time, you may change careers at some point and you're gonna wanna change your typical role. On the Mac app, you can find the typical roles in the preferences general tab. All the typical roles come with some preset fields that populate when you select that typical role. If you look at this logbook I have on the screen, you can see I have instructor selected. If I go over here to the right, if I look at the time fields, you can see that uh, PIC is set to display, cross country is set to display, dual given is set to display. Um, besides time fields, various other fields will be set to display for each typical role. Um, and you, when you see that these change, let's say you now you're an airline first officer, you change your typical role, and now your logbook fields have changed. Uh, don't worry, none of your data has changed. Even though fields may change when you change your typical role, all the data is still there. It just depends on whether you can see them or not. Uh, we did actually have a question come in in the logbook registrar registry. Um, and it was, I have been upgraded to a captain. How can I switch my role without affecting my previous flights? So I just wanna emphasize that when you change your typical role, these fields may display, they may not display, none of your data changes, none of your past flights change. Autofill times will change with each typical role as well. Uh, for airline first officer, SIC is uh, autofilled, but 
uh, none of your previous flights autofills, none of your times are gonna change. So just be cognizant of that. So for this example, let's go with an airline first officer and let's say, all right, I changed, I have my default fields out now, but may, that you're not stuck to these default fields. You can go through your logbook and select any fields you want to display or deselect any of the default fields. Maybe you wanna see your scheduled times. Let's turn scheduled times on. Now you can see I have scheduled times set to display here in my logbook. Maybe I only log out and in, and I don't need the off and on times. So you can turn things on to clean it up a little bit. When you go to the time field, you can select things. Let's, uh, the defaults are SIC night and actual instrument for this uh, uh, setting of a typical role. But maybe you fly under a regulation that uses P1US. You can turn that on. Maybe you fly under a regulation that uses IFR instead of actual instrument. Um, maybe you wanna turn that on, turn actual instrument off. So you can go across and customize all these fields. You can do these with all the tabs. You can do that with people, landings, operations. Besides all these default fields, each one of these tabs has multiple custom fields. And you see there's 20 custom op fields. There's 20 custom landing fields. So this app is completely customizable to the way you wanna log. Once you go through and set up all the fields that you want to display, you can even change the way these are looking in your logbook or where they're, where they're displayed in your logbook. If I look at my times here, you can see that I see total time, then I see night time, then I see SIC and IFR. Maybe I want my SIC time to be right under total time. On the Mac app, you can take any column, click and hold the header, and you can drag it left, you can drag it right. Let's say I want this right next to my total time, right there, I'm gonna drop it. And if you go to the right, you can see total time, and then SIC time, and then night. So all these fields are customizable by being displayed, not displayed, where you want them. Another field I want to talk about is the pilot flying field, which is very important for the professional pilot. This is set to display for this typical role we've selected, but if you don't see it, you can always find it under duty, then capacities. This is an important field because as a professional pilot, you can just tick this box for any leg and pilot flying is set to be coupled by default to takeoffs and landings. So you can go into any entry in your logbook and then you can just tick this box and if you look at my takeoffs and landings down here, you can see it now logged a takeoff and landing. If I deselect the box, you can see these are now gone. This is a super easy way as a professional pilot to log which leg was your flying leg. So you can go through and you can just tick this easily. If you don't want that behavior, that's also customizable. If you go into the landings field, you can say, by default, Log10 Pro uh, has the pilot flying box coupled with it but you can change it to always log a takeoff and landing for every entry you do or never for any entry you do and it would just be completely manual. So that's just a couple of the ways that Log10 Pro is customizable. I've been showing you this on the Mac. I'm gonna pass it over to David that's gonna show you where some of these fields are on iOS. We're also gonna be talking, linking some videos below in the comments for this uh, later, such as typical role videos that you can expand uh, that expand more on some of these topics that we're going through. So David. Thank you very much, Thomas. So as you said at the very beginning, the typical roles are a great way of getting started with Logton Pro with an out of the box configuration. So where do you find these on iOS? So to find these, you would go to, this is the same whether it's an iPad or an iPhone, you would go to more at the bottom right of the screen and then you would click on settings, my logbook, and then you will see that the first option is typical role. If you tap on it, then you will get a list of all of the typical roles that Thomas, you've already mentioned, and then just tapping on whichever one you want will configure everything. Now, so like you were saying, what if you want to add additional um, fields or, you, or there's a field that's displayed and you don't want it? So to make those visible or reorganize them on your Mac, on your 
iPad or iPhone, sorry, you would go to logbook here at the top, select any flight, doesn't matter which one it is. And then once you've selected the flight, tap on the three dots that are on the top right corner. So when you tap on those, you'll get a little menu. If you tap on configure fields, you'll see that underneath each of these sections, there's a configure section button that has appeared. So for example, let's go to time. And then if we tap on configure section, you will get a pop-up with all of the available fields that you can turn on and off as you wish, as well as if you scroll to the bottom, you will see all of those custom fields that Thomas was talking about. You can rename them to whatever you want, and then you can enable them or disable them. Whilst in this view, you'll notice as well that there's a triple equal sign that is on the right-hand side of each field. So you can actually tap on it, and then you can drag up and down any of these fields to organize them um, like you want. So now that we've got the fields that we want, let's look at how do we change how the data is displayed in those fields. So we're going to go back to the more, and then let's go to settings, and then we want to go to display options. Here you can see the time format. You can change hours, minutes, decimals. You can decide whether you use Zulu time or not, and then if not, you'll get a little thing to choose what time zone you want to use. A very important thing that you'll find um, on iOS is the application theme. Obviously, when we are flying, whether the application theme is in light or dark mode is really important, especially in night operations. So you can configure here when and how that will automatically switch. So in this case, you can see that set to normal, which will always be light. If you tap on it, you can configure it to always be dark, to be automatic, which will be based on the time of your device, or based on system, which will basically be based on whether your iPhone or iPad is on day mode or night mode. Another little thing is a theme switch gesture. So what if you know you forgot to set that, and then you open the app in a night flight, You know it's 11 p.m., the middle of the night, and then this bright light just flashes in the middle of a flight deck. So obviously you want to be able to switch this quickly and swiftly to dark mode. So this is what the theme switch gesture will do. A long tap anywhere in the screen, anywhere in Lockton Pro with three fingers will actually quickly switch between the two. So obviously you can't see my fingers, but I will tap the screen now with three fingers, long touch, and then you'll see that it changes to dark mode. Similarly, you can do exactly the opposite. Tap it again, and then you will see that it changes back to light mode. So this is a really useful thing um, when you're having your iPad or your iPhone on the go. So scrolling further down, you can change the application. Uh, you can change the icon to see which one you want, the format of the coordinates, you know, the places, whether you want the ICAO, IATA code, etc. You'll find here the FAR117 limits as well. This feature is currently um, only for FAA117 regulations, and it will just basically keep an eye on your duty periods and and stuff just to make sure that you're not um, you know, going to breach any of the limits. Um, same again, Paul will put either now or later um, in the comments a little article that we've got that just explains all the ins and out of this feature. So going back to the configuration, if we go to time calculations here on the left, then you will also be able to change whether you want your total time to be calculated from out in taxi times, whichever one is relevant to you. Um, you can change it there. So now we've just got to a point where we've got the fields that we want to display. We're displaying that information in the way that you, we want it. So it's time to start logging a flight. Before we start logging a flight, it's worth mentioning as well that any of the changes that we've done here to change how the data is displayed, not only that will change you know, how the data gets displayed here in your logbook, but also if you generate a report, then, and you've got your logbook configured, for example, to um, display the airports in the three letter IATA code, so will the report. Similarly, if you've got it configured for the four letter ICAO code, then so will the report. So all the changes here, as well as your logbook, will affect and will, you know, uh, will be mimicked in any of the reports that you generate. So going back to where we were, login flights. So, now we're going to give you a few things and a few tips that will make the login process as easy as possible and as quick as possible. Obviously, there will always be certain things um, as commercial and professional pilots that will always be the same. 
So, you know, we're just going to have a look how to configure those things to happen automatically so that you don't have to do it every single time. So let's say, and the most common one, that you fly always the same aircraft type. So you would want any new flight to be automatically uh, populated with that aircraft type. So to do that, we would go to the type section here at the bottom, select whichever one of the types we want. So let's say for this example, the E135, the Embraer 135. So then we can tap on it and you'll see here that there's a default button. If we enable that, then that means that any new flights will automatically have that. Similarly, maybe not so common, but it can still happen. You always fly the same airframe, the same registration. So we can do exactly the same thing. Go to aircraft, select whichever one it is. So let's say, for example, this LTP5, and then we, I can make a, the default as well. Same thing will happen. We'll take it even further. Airports, let's say you're based somewhere and you will always fly in and out of that place. So you can do exactly the same thing. If we go to places, select whichever, whichever airport is a relevant one. So this one, for example, you can make it a default as well. Additionally, you can also do this with a crew. Let's say that you're an airline captain or you're an airline first officer. You will always be, or most of the time anyway, an airline captain. So you would want your name to always appear in the PIC field. So if we go to now to the people tab and then we can here select yourselves as PIC or select yourselves as SIC. And similarly, you can select other people as PIC and SIC. Now, we briefly talked about this earlier. Um, Thomas touched on it um, very briefly. But here on iOS, you can also change the pilot flying settings. So to do this, we would go to more settings, my logbook, and then you'll hear that you'll have here the pilot flying settings. Same again, you can select whether you want new flights to be automatically um, marked as pilot flying or not, and also when the landings autofill, whether it's linked to pilot flying, whether it's always, or whether you just never want the landings to auto-populate. So now we've introduced a couple of new things here with the defaults. So I'm going to give it back to Thomas, and then he can show you all of these defaults fields and how they work on the Mac. Thanks, David. Um, yeah, I just want to show these uh, real quick where you can find these settings on the Mac. Um, as David said, um, there are some ways you can change the way these fields look on, um, such as uh, if you prefer ICAO identifiers or I added identifiers, you can find these in preferences general. Um, if you prefer to show your logbook in UTC or local time, this is also preferences general. Same with time, hours decimal, hours minutes. All of this is customizable in Log10 Pro. Additionally, anything you change here, uh, like we have, I have a KO for these identifiers on the right. If you generate a report, these settings will transfer to the report. Um, David also showed some really great uh, shortcut tips uh, being the defaults when you log a new flight. Let me show you where those defaults are located on the Mac. Uh, the objects that are uh, stored in Log10 Pro, such as types, aircraft, places, and people, they're stored in separate databases. And when you make changes to any of these databases, it's changed throughout your logbook, just a little FYI. But you can also, this is where you also want to make the defaults. So if you fly uh, an A320 and you want that to be your default, you can check the little default box here. On all these object tabs on the Mac, the default is in the center data field column, such as maybe you fly corporate professionally and you're always in the same aircraft. Um, you can set whatever aircraft that is, and then you can set that as the default and every new flight will populate this specific aircraft ID. Uh, same with places, if you fly in and out of the same airport, you can set that as default airport. And then people, you should always set yourself uh, for a default role, uh, either PIC or SIC. And if appropriate, you can set somebody else as a default role too. So those are some quick settings that you can use to customize your logbook. Um, let's talk a little bit more about things that may be appropriate for a professional pilot. 
And Thomas, uh, before, I, I thought it maybe I'd jump in and just ask. Yeah, one, go ahead. One of the questions that came in, um, which hopefully you can start to put you on the spot, but there you go. <laughs> this is the nature of things. Um, just uh, we had a question come in from Brian saying, is there a way to make positioning legs not count for total time? I want to log deadheads for duty day, but not count for total time. Currently, I have to manually delete the SIC in total time fields. Yeah, for sure. So um, that's a great point. Um, the entry type field is a really uh, is is a way to is a good way to designate positioning legs. So let's say um, I'm just going to throw a positioning leg in this logbook. Let's say this flight is a positioning leg, and I have total time in here. Total time will populate if you put out and in times to that positioning leg. So um, and it doesn't matter whether you've designated this flight to be uh, a positioning or any other type of entry type. So if your logbook is set to, to populate total time from out and in, and you're putting out and in in those positioning legs, then um, it is going to populate total time. But uh, what I see a lot of people doing is, since positioning is technically um, more of a duty time, that what I see people doing is logging duty times for their positioning legs. And in that way, the total time stays uh, unfilled, but you still are calculating your duty if it's, uh, if it's duty for that specific uh, uh, airline assigned duty positioning leg. So duty is one way that uh, I see a lot of people logging uh, positioning legs. You can also just leave scheduled times in there. Um, you know, if you're scheduled for a deadhead, you're gonna have scheduled, it's gonna be scheduled on your line and you can just leave those scheduled times in there. Um, so there's a couple ways to work around that, but just note that yes, if you're logging actual movement times in that entry and your logbook is set to calculate total time, it will calculate, but um, for things like positioning legs, I think duty logging duty might, might help you or just leaving it as scheduled might help you too, so. That's great. Um, thanks, thanks, Thomas. That's awesome. Let's try one more question, then we'll get on with the keep on what you guys what you guys were talking about. So, um, I've got a question. How can I update the landings and takeoffs to sync with the pilot flying option, or even with all my entries? I, I think uh, this is from Siver. Sorry for my my um, pronunciation, Siveram. Uh, I've just moved my logbook from Excel and don't have this. So I think he's thinking like retrospectively, can I do it? And um, I know that you're covering this a little bit later, actually. I just realized that maybe we can, <laughs> do you want to wait or do you want to cover it now? Uh, no, we can cover it now. So if I understand that question right, it sounds like they entered, they logged, uh, they imported a bunch of Excel data into their logbook and they have takeoffs and landings in there. But now they need to. They want to also mark those entries as pilot flying, uh, if I'm understanding that correctly. Um, so yeah, it's, I think it's to sync. It's I think it's similar to what you're talking about later. So you know, taking off the pilot flying option, it will automatically the, the kind of automating landings and takeoffs. And I don't know if you can do that retrospectively. Yeah, I mean, if you if you have takeoffs and landings in there, and pilot flying is coupled with takeoffs and landings, if you start uh, adjusting the pilot flying checkbox, it would affect those. So you could go into the landings page, and then select uh, never, and then you should be able to um, use. So here's an entry that I have with takeoffs and landings. And if I deselect and select the pilot flying field, it's not going to affect any of these takeoffs and landings. So you should be able to go through your logbook and adjust pilot flying uh, that way. Uh, and Great. then going, going forward, you can put this back to be coupled with pilot flying. And then going forward, you can just use the pilot flying checkbox in conjunction with it. That's great. And I was going to suggest if there's something more detailed you want to talk about, or if you need help, like definitely connect in with our support team. Um, in uh, Log Term Pro, you just hit more help, uh, contact support, um, or in the Mac, hit the help menu and then contact support. So um, maybe suggest that uh, Sivaram, that you uh, get in contact with support and we can 
we can talk it through with you. All right. Yeah, so um, the question about positioning uh, is a good segue to what I was gonna talk about next because um, um, I did wanna talk about duty, which is an important uh, aspect for the professional pilot. Um, and on the Mac app, if you go to preferences and the duty section, you're gonna see that Log10 Pro has two separate period, uh, types of period, uh, duty periods. It has regular on duty and off duty, and then it also has FDP start and FDP end. Just know that depending on your regulation, you might need both. Um, rest is predicated on the main duty periods. So if you're using your log book to calculate rest, you're gonna need to log those. And FDP is specific, uh, is used in FAA regulations and in EASA regulations and is uh, flight duty periods and is usually within regular duty. So you may need to log both of them. You may not need to log both of them, but let's just say for this example, I want my on duty, off duty. I'm gonna show my total duty. And then I also wanna log FTP start, FTP end, and I wanna see my total FTP. So you can see here, I've turned those on and now all my, F, my duty periods are showing here on the right side. So how can we customize these? One way you can do that is you can set Log10 Pro to default to nine, like you can, you can set how the times de default to. So as, uh, let's say I wanna be on duty 60 minutes before my out time, I wanna be off duty 30 minutes after arrival. And I want my FDP to start 45 minutes before my out time. And I want my FDP to end 15 minutes before arrival. So I actually have two duty periods, FDP being within on duty. So I have my default times here. So let's look at this in action. Let's take uh, this, these three entries I have on the 17th of March, there's three flights. So now you may be asking, I've set my default duty times, why do I not see my duty times there? That's because log Pro does not actually automatically log the duty times. You do have to do one click logging of these duty times. That's because you don't log on duty and off duty for every single leg. You wanna be on duty before your first flight and off duty on your last flight. So let's see this in, in action. We have our first leg of the day. I have it scheduled at 10 a.m. I've set my defaults. So how do I log this? One click logging in the Mac app, you put your cursor in the duty field and you tap the space bar and your default times will populate. You can see I've set my default to be 60 minutes before my out time. There it is, my out time is 10 a.m. local. My default duty time is 9 a.m. I also have my FDP default set. I can do the same thing. I can set my cursor in the field, tap the space bar on my keyboard, and now my 45 minute default is logged there. Now you can go ahead and log your flights for the day. There's my first flight, I'm gonna log that. My next flight here, my last flight of the day. Now I'm done with my day. Now you can do the same thing, except for off duty and FTP end, cursor in the field, space bar, my default populates. You can see my total duty for the day is seven hours and 30 minutes. I'm gonna log FTP end here, space bar. You can see my default populated and now my total FTP for the day is seven hours. So with one click, you can populate your uh, default duty times and the reason these don't is because for any intermediate flights, obviously you don't want to be logging duty, but it will be encompassed within the out and off duty that you do populate. I'm gonna pass this over to David and he's gonna show you where these defaults are on iOS because they're a little bit different location. Thanks Thomas. So there's a couple of things that are very similar to the Mac in the way that you will still have to, and for the same reasons as the Mac, you will still have to set your default. So let's start with that. If we go to more here, then go to settings, time calculations, then you will see uh, you will see here 
a few duty time defaults as well as flag duty time defaults. So you can configure it the same way that uh, Thomas did for whatever is relevant for the type of operation that you're doing. Now, obviously, Sayo is, and we don't have we don't have a cursor that we can click on. That we don't have a space bar as such. So what we've done, we've got the show clock time autofill buttons, which you will see here. It's a toggle that if I turn on, then when we go to the lockbook view and select a flight, you will see that all of these blue squares with suggestions have appeared. So let's, for example, find a flight that has some times with it. So this, for example, has a total time, total time of 135. So if we scroll down to the jury, um, part of it, you will see that you will get these little suggestions that are based on the defaults that we've set uh, just there in more settings, my logbook. So then we can just quickly tap on them and then they'll get automatically filled. On duty, off duty, FDP start, FDP end, whichever one is the appropriate one for the flight that you're logging. Very similarly, the moments that you've got on duty and off duty, total duty will be calculated automatically and then FDP start, FDP end, the total FDP will just like that get populated automatically in a very similar way that total duty of two hours and 50 minutes and the on duty, oh, sorry, off duty for this and then the on duty for the next period and that will be used to calculate your um, your rest time. So these autofill buttons are not just for the duty, they're, they're for everything. So for example, in this flight, we said that there's an hour and 30 minutes of total time. So you get an hour and 30 minutes to quickly fill with any of the other any of the other fields, just in case it's something they want to do. For example, quickly one hour and 35, and they will also populate uh, the from and to airports. This will be based on your GPS location. So you can see here, I'm being suggested EGAC because my local airport. So I can just quickly just tap on it and then that'll get automatically um, populated. Great, thanks, David. Um, we're gonna leave it on David's iPad here for a second, but we wanted to switch up to a little bit uh, and talk about smart groups. So we uh, in the webinar register we had a lot of questions about smart groups and uh, we thought we would answer some actual questions here in the webinar. Uh, before we do though, I think it's important that uh, maybe uh, on an iOS device, David shows us where you can find the smart groups. Certainly. So now we've talked about a lot of the tabs here. We've talked about logbook, aircraft and stuff, but we haven't been to the radar tab here. So let's go to the radar tab very quickly. You'll see here that you've got the plan tab. You can see the switcher here at the top. We've got the plan tab and then we've also got the analyze tab. So the let's start with the analyze tab. The analyze tab will basically give you a summary of everything. You've got a few, all of your groups are on the left hand side and these groups can be based on time. So for example, all entries that I've just selected here, last seven days, last 28 days, you know, last 90, whatever. And then you've got the smart groups, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then as well, any currencies or limits that you might have set up. Now, all of these groups, any of the groups on the left, you can tap on. So for example, let's go to the last six months. You can tap on, and then you'll see that the right-hand side has updated. So on the right hand side, you'll get a breakdown and a quick overview of everything that is relevant about those last six months. So you can see here that there was 289 flights, 439, 42 hours. You can even show the things in the map and see where you've been in the last six months. And most importantly, any of the fields like we showed earlier that were visible in the logbook view will actually be visible here with a little breakdown, a total breakdown, and then as well as a specific aircraft type breakdown that you can see here. So we can see here that in the last six months, I've got seven hours and 41 minutes of cross country on the A320neo. And you can just very quickly see all of this. Similarly, in the plan tab, you can see, first of all, you'll have the time loop at the top. The time loop is, is actually incredibly powerful. You can pinch in, uh, well, pinch out even, and then span out the amount of time or you can zoom in and then make it all more detailed. It will have all of your flights, 
all of it, all of your duty periods. You can scroll through time, and then you, you can see here the rest bef uh, in between different duties. In this case, 117 hours and 54 minutes. And you will have noticed that as I was scrolling left and right, everything at the bottom updates. So why is that? Because all of the limits and currencies that we would have set up, obviously those change over time because as you fly or as time passes, those will change. So this time loop will actually let you scroll to any point in time and then you will be able to get at a glance at that point in time where you've just scrolled to the state of any of those currencies on limit. Be that in the past, be that in the present, you can quickly tap now here at the top and it will take you to what it looks like right now. Or even if you wanna have a look at what they will look like, I don't know, this time next week. And then you can have a look at all of those straight away. Great, thanks, David. Now that you've shown us where, uh, before we move on, I was wondering if Paul, you had any questions come in that we should address? Yeah, I thought it would be kind of useful to just cover a couple. Thanks, Thomas. So um, we had one question from Jad saying, uh, if you're syncing between Mac and iOS, do you need to change the settings for each or will they pair with one another when you sync? That's, uh, that's a good question. Uh, the configurations of each device do not sync and that is by design. So if you set up your Mac to have all sorts of fields displayed and you set up an iPad to have different fields displayed, uh, they will not change when you sync them. The configuration should stay distinct. All the data will still populate uh, from one device to another, even if that field is not set to display in that other device. But each device is set to stay in its specific configuration by design. This is because maybe you use your uh, one device for uh, airline flying and maybe you use another device for general aviation flying. So um, if you want them to be the same, you just have to set them up one time to the same way and then they'd be set, but they do stay distinct. Perfect, thanks. Um... I think that uh, I think that covers it for now. We'll we'll keep going on on your examples, and then we'll we'll come back to the the other questions. Yeah. So this is where we were going to actually answer some questions that came in during the webinar. And uh, I'm gonna since David's on the uh, radar screen already, I'm gonna ask the first question to David here. Go so here's a question that came in. I'd love more information on creating custom smart groups for things like dual given, cross country time, et cetera. Brilliant. So there's actually two, two ways of doing this. One of them you can probably imagine just based on what I've just showed you. But since we're on the topic of smart groups, I'm actually going to show how to do this with a smart group. So the first thing that you will want to do is go to the radar page. And then you will see at the top left a plus sign that you can use to um, create a smart group. Now the smart groups uh, will add a link in the comments or, or will be added later, but it, they will basically let you filter anything that you have, anything and everything with loads of different possible combinations. So in this case, because we just want to see our cross country time, we don't actually have to filter anything. We can just literally go to display us, and then it just means that any of the data captured within that smart group, which in this case, because we haven't set any filters, is your entire, uh, sorry, I was with the wrong one, this one. So because we haven't set any filters, all of our flights are gonna be captured by that smart group. So we can just simply go and display as and change to cross country time, for example. And you'll see that this one will update here, 7,285. And then we can quickly go to this and then name this um, cross country. And then that will be a quick way of seeing this. The same applies to uh, dual, for example. So we can dual or nighttime, we can just go nighttime if, this, if that's what we want, uh, just to do a different example. And then we can do nighttime as well, display as nighttime, and then everything will update 418. Now, that is another way of doing it. But with what I showed earlier, you can just go to all entries and provided that that field is visible, then you can just go here and say, right, uh, very quickly, all of my flights, blah, 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 cross country, 7,285, which is uh, what we had earlier, or nighttime, 
418 and 17, which is um the same uh the same result that we got here. You can actually see it here, uh, 418. All right, thanks, David. Uh, one more question uh, on iOS, uh, and then we're gonna show you how to set up some smart groups on the Mac. So this another question that came in was uh, setting up personalized limitations, helicopter pilot, 36 hour, six day limit for firefighting, 135 limitations. Uh, so this person is obviously flying under FAA 135 limitations and they're looking for a 36 hour limit in a six day period. Perfect. Um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you right now how to do this one, but it is worth saying just before I even start that I'm going to be using the 36 hour and six day limit, but obviously this can be configured to whichever one are the limitations of what you're flying. So if your own limitations are 40 hours in seven days, then you would set it up the same way. You would only have to um, change the values. So let's dive right into it. So this time, same thing again, plus button on the top left. This time we want to create a limit group. Why a limit group? And we'll add a link as well, just so that you know exactly the difference between uh, the three, the smart group currencies and limit groups. But in this case, we've got a limit, which is 36 hours and six, and six days. So we want to make sure that we set up a limit group this way. So new limit group, and then we'll call this 36 and six. Obviously you can call this whatever you want. In this case, we do want to set um, a filter for this to be captured because obviously we don't want all of that, all of our flights to be showing here. We just want the flights in, in the last six days. So if we go here in the last, tap on it, and then go six and then just, uh scroll to days and then well let's say we can add color coding as well just so that we know quickly just by looking at the color roughly how much we've got left so let's say that 36 i want it to be green then 20 i want it to be orange and then when it gets to 10 or less i want it to be red just because i'm about to run out of it so now we want to tell the group exactly what my limit is we've already told it that it's in the last six days but we need to tell it what the actual limitation is. So if we go here to criteria, then tap on configure, we want to use the category of time because this is based on total time. And then within time, we want the key of total time, which is here at the bottom. If your limitation for whatever reason was different and it was 36 hours of, I don't know, cross country, unlikely, but it, it could be a limitation you would just use cross country instead. This is highly customizable. So total time, and then we want the operator to be less or equal than 36, which is our limit. So now we've got this set up. Now, what is the issue? This is capturing any of the flights in my logbook, just provided, and it's just looking at the last six days to make sure that I've not done more than 36 hours. But in this particular example, we wanted that limit was for firefighting, that limit was for a helicopter. So what happens if you fly both fixed wing and helicopter? That's no problem either. We can actually add another criterion to this group to make sure that it only looks at the um, hours that have been flown in a helicopter. So we can just tap here, add criteria. And then this time we want the criteria to be the aircraft type. The key would be the category the category or aircraft, and then is rotorcraft. Now, before we continue with this, obviously we would need to have previously set an aircraft type to be defined as rotorcraft, because otherwise um, there's no way for Lockton Pro to know it. Uh, so once we go to the types tab, then and you create a new type, most of the time it would be uh, auto-populate from the database. But if it isn't, you can just add it manually. So in this case, the helicopter that I've got here, Sikorsky 64, then you'll hear, you'll see here the category is rotorcraft. If it wasn't for any reason, then you can just tap on it and select any of the available categories. And that is what will be used to filter um, further down the line. So once that, now that we've got that out of the way, let's go back to the limit group that we we're creating. So 36 and six, you know, for now we haven't done any um, 
helicopter flying recently, so it's not actually captured any flights. And it says that I've still got 36 limits, 36 hours sorry, available. Now, if we go, remember earlier we said that the plan tab actually had all of my currencies and limits at any point in time. So obviously we've just created a limit, which will be shown there. And we can actually, if we go to it, we can actually see that we've got a little, you can see here the little yellow warning um, on the 29th of March. So as soon as we've created that limit group, even though it's only just been done now, that limit group is constantly looking at your logbook and looking at your logbook is actually realized that with a schedule that we've loaded for next week, we will actually come that day, come the 29th of March, and let me zoom in just so that you can see it clearly, it will get to a point that we will actually, that 36 and six limit, we will actually be over that. So it lets us know in advance so that we can, you know, we've got plenty of time to um, to do something about it. So it, it is extremely dynamic and it will be constantly looking at your logbook. You can, you saw it here. We created this group live and straight away we were told here, March 29th, you're going to have a problem. Yeah, David, uh, that was pretty cool. The and it's a feature not everybody knows about in terms of the time loop. Can you just highlight how you uh, zoom in and out? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can't really <laughs> you can't really see my fingers, but see the way that you would zoom in in a picture. You just sort of pinch in and pinch out. So it would be the same the same sort of thing. So if you use the two fingers on the time loop and it just sort of take them both together. Like if you were actually squeezing the calendar all together, then you can actually, you know, s make it smaller so that you can see more days. You can scroll left, right for quick navigation. And then, you know, let's say we wanted to go to December 2020. So we can just zoom out, quickly go to December last year. And then once we're there, we can actually zoom back in and then see very in, in much more detail um, what it was, what was what, at that point in time. Perfect, thanks, thanks. Um, we, we also, hang on, I think there was one other question here that actually related to where you're at now, David. Can you show us quickly how you develop the flights only smart group on iPad? Certainly, yeah, certainly. Um, this is it's actually a really good smart group to have, um, you know, because, um, it is worth noting that any smart group that you've got, you can actually create a report based on that smart group. So if you only want your flights, for example, to show in the smart group in the report, then you can quickly create this smart group. I'll show you how now. And then you can just create a report based on that that will only contain your flights. It'll not have positioning flights, it'll not have standby um duties, it'll not have, you know, simulator duties, for example. So let's go, let's go back to the analyze tab. And then I know I've, I've, I've still got it there, but I'm going to create it from scratch just so that everyone can see it. So the plus button at the top left, like we've been doing, we want a smart group because we want to filter, which is the smart group. So then, you know, we can name this flights only. Um, uh, flights only. And then the same way that we've got a display as that we talked about it earlier, we can also configure the show. So this will basically filter by the entry types that we've got in the log. So let's say in this case, I only want the flights. So I can just tap on flights. And then that smart group will only show me the flights. Similarly, you can actually do the opposite. I want a smart group that only shows me the uh, simulator duty. So I can do exactly that. Now, to make sure that this works, it is really important that each of the entries has have actually been defined as you know either flight or simulator. So to do that, when you go to the logbook tab, you will see that at the very top, uh, you've got um, actually perfect example because it's not actually visible here. So I can show you how you can make it visible. So same as we were saying earlier, top right corner, three dots, configure fields. Then we want the flight section, the one at the top, and then tap on configure section. And then you will see one here that's entry type. So if you make, if you toggle that on, and then let's say we actually want this to be at the very, very top. So let's move it to the very top, click, tap on done. And then once you've got this, you can tap on it and then you can select what type of um, entry this is. Um, that is, it will become very useful because you've 
set this entry to be a flight or be a positioning or whatever, which means you can later filter your entries like we've done here, just based on um, the type of entry that it is. That's great. Thanks, David. No worries. Have you, um, has anything else come in, Paul? Uh, give me a second. Oh, we just had a, a question around syncing. Um, just to highlight, I mean, I was going to say to HeliPilot to uh, get in touch with us at support at Cordine.com and we can help for your particular situation, but just wanted yeah, to show. I've, I've got the iPad here, so I can show you very quickly where is this. I know you've put it up, but just to do it here very quickly, if you tap more here at the bottom right and then tap on help and then contact support, and then you can very quickly here put a subject, all the information, you you need. I would recommend enabling the send your logbook to Cordine for testing, speeds things up a little bit, uh, just so that we can actually um, see what's going on. That's great. Uh, the question was around <clears throat> syncing devices syncing. Can you just show where those, where that, uh, the sync options so, are? Certainly. So here we would go to settings. And then once you, we go to settings, you've got a little pane on the left, so you can click on sync, and then sync using, you can decide which one it is, iCloud or, or Wi-Fi. Whilst we're here, probably worth noting that it would be very highly recommendable to create regular backups. Now you can create them either on iCloud or Dropbox, and it's just a great way of making sure that your logbooks stay safe no matter what. Great, let's get to the, uh, oh, we did have one more question come in here. How to properly record simulator duty from Doug. Um, in terms of simulator duty, this would greatly, I would say this would greatly depend on your local authority. So I can I can show you the way that it, it is currently recommended for EASA regulations. And then, so th the main difference would be whether you want that simulator time to be counted towards total time or not. So for the purposes of this example, I'm gonna make it so that it does not count towards total time, but it would be a very small difference if we wanted that it does get counted towards total time. So let's just create a new flight here uh, with a date of today uh, flight, let's call it SIM. And then we can, the main thing would be to log simulator time. That means because it's in the simulator field, it means it gets sent to the right places when we generate reports. Now, let's say that you've put, and the same way that Thomas was saying earlier, we're positioning flights. Let's say that you've put your out and in times, and that has populated the rest of the times. So you can just very quickly clear those times and then enter your simulator time. So let's say that was a four hour session. Now, in terms of jury, you can just as well use the jury. So let's say you had a four hour simulator session that had um, a two hour brief beforehand and then a one hour debrief post sim. So in this case, we've got a 12 o'clock. So then let's put my on jury at 10 o'clock and then my off jury at, uh, what do we say, 14. So then it would be 15, 50, uh, 30, sorry. Now, another key importance um, is to make sure that the type, the same way that I made sure that my helicopter was defined as a helicopter, it's really important to make sure that the aircraft type that we're using is defined as simulator. So okay. if we go. Can I jump in for a second before you go there? It's just to, that, do you wanna define the type of, um, you know, at the top there that it's not a flight, that it's sim duty? Is that what you, would you also wanna change that? Definitely, 100%. I was testing you there to make sure that you caught it out. So <laughs> definitely, yeah, you definitely want to do that. <laughs> so you would want to change that to flight, from flight to simulator duty. That means as well that in the smart group that we created earlier, the flights only smart group, it means this will be excluded and it will not be a uh, part of it. So um, thank you very much for catching that. <laughs> so if we go back to the types, so, um, we've actually got a SIM here. So let's say it's an A320 SIM. So we would want to define the type just to make sure, you know, A320 SIM, just so that we give it a name. Make model, if you want to add it, that's absolutely fine. Category, 
that would be simulator. We don't want to, or we would not want to use engine type or class because let's say that we say that this, you know, a simulator is not really a jet engine, even though it simulates one. But if we were to say this, that it was a jet um, aircraft, that means that whenever we generate a report that tells us how much jet time do you have, that is going to get included because we've told Lockton Pro that the engine of this type is of is a, is a jet. So obviously in this case, we want to leave it blank just to make sure that everything adds up after this. So in this case, I think I, um, I saw you there say that it's a level D full motion. So the way that I would do it, for example, if you go, if you go for your recurrent training, I would um, A320 sim or whichever type is the relevant one, make a model, it's up to you. Um, the main thing would be that the category is simulator, engine type and class are empty. And then once you go do that, if you go to your logbook and then go aircraft type, we want this to be the A320 sim. And then we've done everything. So key things would be um, entry type, as Paul said, then simulator type, and then simulator time. That would be, I would say, I don't know, Thomas, if you've got anything else to add, but I would say that would be the best way of um, doing going about this. The only other thing I would add is if you want to go to the aircraft tab real quick, uh, there is some sim levels that you can put in. Yeah. Um, so you, there is a, if you go to the aircraft tab and then configure fields for the aircraft tab, you're going to find, um, uh, not in the types tab, but the actual aircraft tab. Um, oh yeah, sorry. And, and you configure fields. Uh, you're going to see, besides the default ones of retractable, high performance, complex, there's all sorts of aircraft uh, types, uh, ID specific fields you can do. You can see there's a sim level field there. You can turn that on and you can mark that as a level D sim. I mean, that that'd be, that's just a really another great way that you can filter data if you need yeah. to. And then we can, uh, what did I put this? Sim level. So you can just go here and yeah that's great um so i don't know what questions we're on we're kind of getting close to the end if anybody does have to drop off uh that's totally understandable obviously we've gone a little bit over time um with the questions uh we do have a few other questions that i think david and thomas have already prepared to run through so if you can stay then great otherwise it will be recorded and i also just wanted to reiterate that um, you know, if you ever have any questions, we have an awesome, fantastic, I should say, support team that is uh, totally available um, to, to help with anything, help with setting up smart groups, help with importing your logbook, help with reports, whatever it is you need. Um, these guys are, are, are the pros. So uh, please don't hesitate to get in contact either from iOS, hitting more help, contact support, or on the Mac help, just go up to the help menu and hit contact support. So um, with that, I would probably uh, say, maybe we wanna move on to the next questions. Yeah, maybe let's just do the next three. We'll do a kind of rapid fire. Uh, this is more actual questions came in and we're just gonna show you how to do some smart groups. So um, David, if you wanna ask the questions and Paul, I'll show it on my Mac. Yeah. Brilliant. So the first question, um, I am logging ATPL, SEP, sailplane, and ultralight hours in Logtemp Pro. How can I generate separated reports and print these reports uh, separately for the authority? Yep. So as David already mentioned, if you run a report from any smart group, um, uh, with the smart group set on the Mac tab, it's a little bit different. Like if I select flights only, and then I go to the reports tab, any report I select will only be filtered by that smart group. Uh, so for this question, they're talking about single engine plane, um, ultralight sail plane. These are all uh, distinctions in the um, types tab that you're going to want to designate. Um, Sailplane being glider, we do have a category for glider. So if you wanted a glider only report, um, let's use that as an example. Uh, you, first thing you wanna make sure is that your types are set correctly. 
Um, I have a glider in here. It is set to a category of a glider. So let's see how we would generate a report with that. I would create a new smart group. I'm gonna call this glider. And then I'm gonna set aircraft type. The category of that aircraft is glider. Now I've just created a smart group and you can see it has six hours and 22 minutes of my glider. If I was to generate any report with this log, with this group selected, it's only going to show my glider time. So that's just a really uh, easy way to filter your data by using any of the data in the types tab. Um, I don't know how you would do, single engine plane would be the same way. Um, if you If you wanted to do that instead, you could do aircraft type, you could change it to class, and then you would say is single engine land. Change that to SEP, and now you can see my logbook is going to filter by a bunch of Piper logging I have in here, and then I can just generate a report with that. So that's that. Uh, let's run through a couple others here. Brilliant. So we've got another question. Um, I am a 1,000 hour commercial pilot and looking to improve my logbook records. How do I log the type of avionics total time? I need to figure out how to do a report to give my time to an insurance company. Yep, again, this is gonna be smart groups filtering. Uh, avionics would be an aircraft specific um, value. So if you went into an aircraft and let's say um, my uh, P-28 uh, retractable plane, um, there's a couple avionics fields in here by default, uh, EFIS and uh, Advanced Avionics, TAA. If those are what you need, that might be good. Let's say you don't though. Let's say you need uh, to know your G-1000 time. Any of these custom fields here, you can click and change them say G1000 cockpit, this aircraft is a G1000. How do, now you don't need to log G1000 time over and over again. You're just saying that this aircraft ID is a G1000 aircraft. So I'm gonna create a smart group. I'm gonna call it G1000. And I'm gonna look in the aircraft tab. I'm gonna look for the custom field I just created. And I'm gonna say is checked. Now show me all the entries that have G1000 checked. And you can see I have 324 hours of G1000 time. And I think we have one more. And then the same thing in terms of creating a report from there, if you have that highlighted, oh. you wanna create a report for your- Perfect, yeah. So now that I have that uh, smart group selected, I can generate a report. Uh, this is a standard logbook report. Maybe you just need something like a summary report um, for insurance purposes or something. And this is all your G1000 time uh, right here. That's awesome. Thanks, Thomas. Brilliant. And the last one we've got, um, and this is a good one, how to customize the currency or, or landing currency on a specific fleet type. Okay, um, this is this highlights a point I wanted to bring up. Log10 Pro does come defaulted with some uh, limit groups, some currency groups. These are all customizable. You can delete these, you can edit these, you can even duplicate these. On the Mac app, if you use the control tab. Um, if I read this question, I, it sounds like they want instrument currency for a specific fleet type. So let's do that. Let's use the default instrument currency. Uh, and maybe actually I just wanna duplicate this for practice purposes. So I held the control key down and I duplicated that currency group. And now I'm gonna say that this is uh, A320 currency specific. So I duplicated the group and it has the default settings of one hold and six approaches and six months. Let's say I wanna say and make it only for aircraft type, type is A320. 
So now you can see my instrument currency on the A320. Uh, I have 44 days left if I was not gonna fly anymore. Tomorrow, if I didn't fly anything, it would say 43. The next day, if I didn't fly anything, it would say 42. But this is, the question was even more specific. It said fleet type. And if you notice this logbook I'm using, there's A320 in here, but there's also 319. There's a 321 and there's even a 320 NEO. So how are we gonna do all of this in one currency group? So let's look at our types tab again and look at all the different, we have the 320 NEO, we have the 319 and 320. Let's say this is all one type rated currency group. I need all this encompassed. So we can use um, batch editing tools and custom fields to make a custom field here where I'm gonna say, fleet, I'm gonna call this custom field fleet, and I'm gonna say this is the A320 family. And I ha it's, ha it's changing this for all my highlighted fields. So that's batch editing a little bit. Now, if I go back to this currency group, and instead of highlighting, uh, making the criteria for a specific type, maybe I wanna say um, for this fleet is, a320 family that I created. Now it's gonna use all the different types of A320 for one currency group. So that's just one way that you can customize Log10 Pro to really meet your specific needs um, as a professional pilot. Awesome. Thanks, Thomas. I'm just looking back, um, seeing if there's any other specific questions that we missed. Certainly one thing I wanted to throw up again is our um, contact, the way to contact support from iOS, just tap more help contact support. And uh, actually you're on the Mac anyway, so you could actually show, uh, show the help menu there, Thomas, up in the top there, yep. And then contact support, um, cool. So uh, yeah, so, so if we did miss any questions, oh, have we got one more? Yeah, here we go from Ronald. What's the best way to log and create smart groups of aircraft models within the same aircraft type? Is it best practice to separate models as separate types? Yeah, so um, you can, s the, the way to do that would be to uh, just create a separate type um, let's say, um, you can see that I have the type here, P28 Alpha. Uh, the P28 Alpha encompasses uh, a Piper 160, a Piper 180, um, a Piper 181. All those are under one type. But if you wanted to differentiate those, you could just create a separate type uh, for um, a 181 and then you can log your time in that, and then you can create another type for um, for like a 160. So you would just make separate types for all the different kind of makes that you have that fall within one specific sort of a type. And then of course you would want to do, as we've been harping on, change the engine type, change the category, and change the class. Great. That's about it. Wanting to, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. I was just um, saying to Doug, just reach out to say if there was an article specifically for setting up avionics as smart groups. And I, um, we don't have a specific article on it, but uh, thanks. Thanks, Ronald, for your question as well. But um, I just saw that coming from Ronald. So uh, just to say to Doug and to anybody else still on the line with us, first of all, thanks for sticking around and uh, thanks for all your questions. And definitely contact our support team, our uh, experts in, ter in terms of setting this up. Um, so if you contact support and certainly if you, you could, you could request Thomas or David too, if you want them to specifically look at your request. But if you need a group set up or if you, 
if you want something, um, if you help with anything, please don't don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Um, I think that's it. I don't like I say if I've missed something, I apologize <laughs> to whoever I've missed. Um, but uh, we had lots of great questions come in um, prior to the event, and lots of great questions throughout the event. So I, I really appreciate it. Um, I guess we'll stop now because we're ten minutes over time. I'll just switch over to uh, so you can see us. Hey, and I got my I got my fantastic T-shirt on too. <laughs> <laughs> so um, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Uh, thanks so much, uh, David and Thomas. You guys are awesome as always. Uh, and um, I guess we'll wave goodbye. Thanks a lot, everyone. See ya. Thanks, thanks everybody. Bye. -bye.